All right, friends and family, uh, here's an update video for you guys. I haven't done one in a few weeks. I've been pretty busy and haven't had a whole lot of time to work on this project, but, uh, you know, I've been working on this aquaponics setup. I've been taking my time, watching a lot of YouTube videos, uh, learning about other people's systems and, you know, hearing about their misfortunes and things that had happened to them and learn from some of their mistakes. And, uh, well, here's, here's what I got so far. So on this side, I've got, uh, I've got eight grow beds. Here's the drain system. I'm using a bell siphon system. Sorry, it's such a, it's still a mess. I haven't, uh, haven't finished them yet, but just gotta clean all this up and add some expanded clay pebbles and get going have all the drains here. I'm using one and a half inch. I know a lot of the other people on YouTube are using half inch and three quarter inch. And when I started this out I was using half inch and I had a half inch drain and I noticed that when two or more of them would cycle it would start to siphon the whole system and then it would overflow the uh, the sump tank. <clears throat> so I upgraded the drains and then I have the drains connected to an even larger diameter drain. So this is one and a half inch and it's going into four inch. So this can't create any kind of suction inside here affecting any of the other grow beds. I hope. And hope never got you anything. But here's the progress I have. These, are, these aren't functioning yet. Here I have uh, the half inch drain line laid out. I don't have any nozzles on it yet. Uh, for nozzles, I found these to be really good. You put that on sideways and the water comes out through the bottom here. And as it comes out, it sucks in oxygen, air, and mixes that with the water and that goes into the grow bed. And I'll show you that here. I'll walk around to the other side to the the four that I have activated, they're, they're independent from the rest here. See, these ones aren't even connected yet. There's no plumbing. But they're getting there. So here's the first four that I built. And they're not connected to the four inch drain system yet. As you can see down here, it's still the one and a half, uh, the one and a half inch system. But I don't have any fish or fertilizer or anything. I'm just using tap water and I'm growing plants in here. They're growing. There's a radish. Looks like a little potato. Uh, here's some tomatoes. Here's another radish. Here's a celery. This was the bottom of a celery stalk that I pulled out of the fridge. Cut the rest of the celery off and either ate it or threw it away. And what was left over was this little stock. I put it in here. It was probably about an inch tall, two inches wide, like a little coin. And I just buried it in there and it just grew out through the center and here we are. But anyways, here's, a, here's the drain system I have. You can probably hear the gurgling and the bubbling because it's sucking in oxygen through here. See the vortices in the center where the water's coming out. It's also mixing with oxygen, so I'm getting dissolved oxygen in there too. And it looks like the plants like it. There's a tomato. And it's got a little bit of burnt leaves, but I think it was like that when I took it out here. I had some issues beforehand. And then here we have a whole bunch of radishes. These are uh, seeds I just sprinkled in here randomly and mixed them in with the uh, cocoa core, or I mean the uh, expanded clay pebbles, excuse me. And then over here we have corn. I've never grown corn before, so this is interesting for me. From what I read, you need to grow a lot of it because there's two separate uh, sexes. There's a male and a female. So you need a lot of uh, corn so that, you know, you have a diverse 
mixture, not just a bunch of females or just a bunch of males. You have a mixture of both, hopefully, and then you know you'll wind up with pollinization and have corn. Otherwise, you'll just have some giant grass. But anyways, here's that. Step back here. Sorry about the mess. This is a project that. Uh, this has been going on for some time and I don't see an end anytime soon. I'm not in a hurry to finish it because I need to take my time with this. Over here in this area I plan on digging a large sump tank, maybe you know 1200 gallons. I'm gonna build a frame uh, probably 4x16 maybe a little bit narrower maybe 3x16 and then dig down two feet and go all the way out to here and then uh, line it with plastic and you know build a frame for it and whatnot and then build 16 more grow beds that, 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 all the way over to here and then here's the future fish tank I painted it and I cut it open and modified it to suit my needs uh, for what I think I need can't stress enough that, that I'm still learning and if you're watching my videos, don't take any of this as fact, because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm still learning. I may have watched a lot of other YouTube videos, but that doesn't make me an expert by any means. Everyone has their own way of doing things. And uh, you'll find that your way will it might work better than mine, so do what you like. And I cut that top piece off of the frame, and I put it over here. Because this was the top and the top only has these two vertical braces to hold the weight of all that water so I took that top chunk of metal and I, I stuck it in here at the bottom um, to help hold the water back because you know it's something like 3,000 pounds of water it's uh, 375 gallons times 8 is somewhere around that good give or take this was sitting on a metal pallet. Uh, I took the metal pallet off. This was the bottom. I took the metal pallet off of here and then I took uh, sheet metal screws and fastened this to the cage. I put one at every rib and then if there's a space greater than eight inches, I put one in the center. And I did that all the way around. hoping that'll hold the water back. I know it's in a container but it still has a lot of weight pushing outward. But anyways here's the, here's the pallet that it was on. It was a metal pallet that it was it was bolted to. I took that off, flipped the tank over on its side so that it's uh, the top of the tank was you know facing one direction so that uh, there's more more room from left to right for the fish. Not necessarily tall with more water, but there's more square footage at the bottom for the fish to roam. We'll see how that works. Here's the piece I cut out. And then, uh, not if you've seen any of my other videos, here's my grow towers. I'm probably going to get rid of these because I mean, honestly, I can't eat enough lettuce to keep up with these. I would have to quit my job and start selling it. And I don't really want to do that because I really like what I do. Here's some that I've been ripping on, just tearing off chunks. This one's kind of burnt. Uh, I'll have to check the nutrient situation on that one. But that's easy, easy fix. Over here I have a, an apple tree. I got this seed from an apple. We'll see how that does. Looks like it's struggling. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. If it dies, no big deal. And right, here's a freaking gigantic radish. It's about the size of a baseball. Uh, it keeps ripping open and then healing. So I'm gonna let it grow and just keep going and see what happens. Uh, like I have been. And over here we have the carrots. I know a couple of you were asking 
about the carrots and we're looking forward to seeing a carrot update so here we are you can see by my hand the carrots are growing well uh, this one here is probably about I don't know, eight, 8 to 10 inches tall maybe a little taller uh, you can't see any carrot tops yet so they're not ready to harvest but when they are I'll do another video may even do one in between now and then Then over here is a couple of the crack keys. Here's a whole bunch of butter, butterhead lettuce. Uh, these have really interesting colors. I can see why they call them butterhead lettuce because if you look here, this looks like butter, margarine. And then here's a mostly empty radish container because I harvested a whole bunch of those radishes, and they're, they've been pretty good. I have a whole bunch in the fridge. These ones are still ready to pick here. I can pick them whenever, but I have enough inside right now. I don't need to pick them, so I'm going to let them grow and keep getting bigger. And we'll make another trip over here around the other side of the house. Here's some Brussels sprouts. There's about five different plants growing there. Over here, there's a giant broccoli covered in flowers. There's a bee flying around right there. He's digging it, loving the broccoli pollen. I like the bees, they're cool. Here's some more lettuce. All right, there's, uh, there's what I got so far. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys have a good day. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatnot, uh, I'll do my best to get back to your questions. I know there's a lot of you guys that watch these videos and ask questions, all five of you guys. So I'll do, I'll do my best to get back to you. Have a good day. Talk to you next time.